Hi everyone and welcome to Asta. This is what we're going to do today. I've been asked by a couple of my friends who are doing the staging and propping for The Bachelor here in New Zealand to do a floral arrangement. I wouldn't really ever demonstrate doing reds and whites because they're such hard colours to work with, but this was the prerequisite. It had to be reds and whites and creams and it's going to be going behind a black and white flocked wallpaper. So it's to be very dramatic and very romantic. And these are really easy arrangements to put together and I just thought, well, this is a good opportunity opportunity to show you how to do it. So give me a minute, I'll get rid of this, I'll get the equipment and we'll get straight into it. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm working on the plinth because that's the height that it has already been predetermined. I've got my urn here. Now I could fill the whole cavity of the urn with some foam, but I've got a little trick that I like to do, and that is put a bucket or just get a big bucket that goes right inside the urn, and then I've got two blocks of oasis that I've put into there. You could if you wanted to take the oasis right to the top, but hey look, this is how I do it and I just fudge it. Right, push that into there and make sure that that's firmly wedged. The other reason why I do this is to transport from my place to the set it just means that that bucket can, with all the flowers can be lifted out and it makes movement much much easier. Okay the first thing to do is to establish some foliage and with these Aurelia leaves I'm just going to put one into there. Now everything I'm using is artificial. You can do this using fresh flowers. The reason it's artificial is because the whole filming schedule is going to be about five weeks so thus the reason for the artificial. So it's like exactly like I've shown you on the fundamentals of floristry. What you do on one side you do on the other and I'll just push that into there. Now I am going to have to have my back to you at some stage along the way because I can't work from behind to do this. Okay so we'll put three leaves in and I'm working right from the outside edges of my foam. So from there the next thing is I've got these other leaves and what you do if you're going to do anything that's going to be one-sided or as this is going to be it's sort of like three-dimensional so you'll see it from this side this side and this side it's going to go up against a wall but I always always put foliage at the back and the reason I do that is it helps with the balance because if you don't get your balance right and you've got all these flowers up here sometimes what will happen is it will tip forward and we don't want that to happen okay so putting those into there and that also just softens up that back area I've got one left so I'm just going to put that up into there and push it right down. Basically everything is cut to the same length with those big leaves as were these Aurelia leaves here. Right, the next thing to do is to use some, I'm going to use some of this and just start to fill it out. So I've put one on that side, take one to that side and then between those leaves at the back just give that a little bit of a bend like that. This is why it's artificial things are so good to work with. That can go to there and then I'm going to bring a couple of bits into here and I'll have another bit into there. So pretty much this is like a round arrangement. So if you're stuck about now and you're thinking, what is she doing and where is she going? Just refer back to my fundamentals of floristry because everything you need is there. We'll put those to one side and I'll come back to those. Right, now, because I've got this, the length from the plinth up through to the urn here, to soften that edge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some ivy. Look at that, just whack. Now, if you were doing this with fresh uh, ivy, just get a whole heap of pieces together and just push them in. From there, because I've got that on that side, I want to put another bit into there, and then I've got this here, and because that's so lovely, I'm just going to put that to there. Now, the reason I've done this is so that when the camera catches it or if you're doing it for a church people sitting there can see people coming to the front can see and people over to that side all have something that's really lovely and drippy and droppy and looks quite gorgeous and softens those hard lines right that's my foliage in give me a few minutes I'll get my flowers out and we'll start to put in the tall structures in the back here I'll be back in a minute Right, the base foliage is around, now we need to start going up. Now, as I said, what I've done is I've worked from the outer edges of my inner container to the outside, so I've still got quite a good space to be working in the inside. Now, when it comes to anything that's artificial that you're buying, you and I both know that nothing grows perfect like that. So what I like to do is just give it a little twist and a little sort of like bend out like that so that you get a bit of movement into it. Now, put that into there like that, so all of a sudden I'm starting to get that triangle shape. 
The next thing I'm going to use is this, and I'm going to put that over to there. Whoa. Now the other thing is, if it moves, just give it a little wee tweak back to you, towards yourself. Also, because these have come from China in a box, you need to actually just open these out as if they were growing. Right, I've got a bit there, and I need another piece there. Now, that there, to me, is already too tall. It needs to come down just a little bit. So because it's wire inside there, I need to cut that and go straight back into that hole. Yes, right, perfect. Now, the next thing to go in will be these. And I'll put one into there. And I'm going to step this down just a little bit to that side there. So is that you've got, you can see that step from there down into there. The next thing is I'm going to put these in and I'm going to put one to there and one over to this side like that. And then we just put the other one. I'm going to bring that up into there. Right, so that's established my lines. The next little tip I wanted to share with you is, sometimes your forms just aren't tall enough. This is what I do, get a bamboo rod. If you can get a bigger one, sometimes what I do is, in the hole into there, we can't see one on this, but you know, if you get a bigger piece, sometimes what I do is I put the, the green foam into there if I'm using fresh flowers, and then just push that inside there. But for today, because I want to extend this, this is what I do, just get a piece of bamboo and get a cable tie, put that onto there like that, and make sure it's really tight, and usually you will need two of those. Green bamboo would have been good, but I didn't have that, but I thought that this would be the best way to show you how to do it. That goes and cut that, and that, and then you can go into here and you can determine, now that is still going to be a bit, maybe not a bit too long. Push that right down into there now, I've got an even bigger, taller arrangement. Beside that, I need to bring in a smaller one, and we're going to step these down as well. So you've got one there, you bring your next one into there, and then the next one will go down much, much lower. And I like to explain to people when I'm doing things like this and teaching people is, think of how a tree grows. The furthest, furthest branches away from the trunk are usually the finest, and as it comes in towards the branches of, or the trunk of the tree, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. That is what I mean by the finest and then just stepping them down like so. Well, it all makes sense when it's finished. Okay, from there, the next thing I want to do is to bring another piece of that into there. And what I'm trying to do now is to, to diffuse the whiteness and the bigness of these big lilies there. So we're stepping down, big white, white, white color there. That is now being diffused by putting in the apple blossom or the little briar rose. Right, from there, the next thing I want to do is to actually start to come down to the front. So I'm going to put one on that side and I'm going to put another one on this side. And as I said, just give them a bend like so. And then with this one here, I'm gonna cut a little bit off that. And it's sort of like hit and miss, but if you go, as I said, go back to my fundamentals of, of floristry and it will give you all of the dimensions on how high things should be and how short they should be. Right, I've got two over that side and I'm just going to put one uh, onto that side and then just bring that forward. So all as we've done from here, you've stepped down, also we're doing the same here. So that's there, that's there. And even though that's over that side, that's just so that when the cameras are looking at it or are filming it, the eye's gonna go across to there because if they shoot from that side, that will go across to there. Now, the next thing to go in are these big white flowers here. So I'm going to put that into there. And continuing the stepping down line, do, if you can, try not, see how we've got that big flower there beside that? Take that down so that it still continues that step down motion. With this, I'll cut that off to there, and I'm going to step that into there. I'm very sorry I've got my back to you, but as I said, I really can't do it back to front because it's too big a job. 
I always start and work with one flower. I also get every component and I put them into groups around me so I know exactly where I'm going. So step, 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 step. And this one, cutting that off, is going to go in to there like that. Now the other thing that I have done is when I look at it this way, I've got the flowers aren't all pointing out at me. I've got one sort of going that way. I've got another sort of going that way. And then I've got this one here. Now I'm not doing them flat like a sailboat. When I was doing my training, we used to call these sailboats, you know, with or um, what are they, like yachts, you know how they've got that big thing like that. And a lot of people make the mistake of making this all sort of just go straight down in one plane and if you have the groupings as you're placing them have enough space as I was told as a, a wee junior that if a, a bee wanted to flow through there or a bumblebee wanted to to fly through and in to pollinate the flowers there was going to be room so make sure that that does come out to give that three-dimensional effect and also to keep it rounded out this way like somebody who's pregnant Get that tummy up. Right, from there, I've got three of these. I'm going to put one into there. I'm going to put one into there. Sorry about that, it fell. And then I'm going to bring that over to there. So now I'm starting to get my triangular shape. I'm going to reserve these until I'm finished because they're going to go out the sides there. But I might have to fudge it and I might actually have to take them into there and bring them out if I don't have enough material. So leave me for a minute till I get all my red flowers and we'll put those in and we're nearly finished. I told you it was easy. Okay, now we're on to the red flowers and let me just tell you that working with red and white has always rem reminded me of blood blood and bandages. You've got to be really, really careful. When you look at the colour wheel, when you've got black and white, black and white equal the same. And then you've got your primary colours. So red is one of the primary colours. So up the ladder, that is the next strongest colour. Putting red in with creams and whites, you actually have to diffuse all of the colours. When you're using fresh flowers, it's so, so much easier. But I think that when you're with red or any primary colour, if you can diffuse it, by that I mean, you know, add tints, tones and tint. Uh, what is it? Tones, tints and shades. And by that I mean you're adding black to it to make it lighter or darker. So what I've done here is, and also you need to work with things that to diffuse them, that you need to, if you're using, say the red rose, then you would come into the chrysanthemum and then you would come into the peony. So what you're actually doing now is you're diffusing the, not only the colors, but also the sizes of your flowers, but we'll get into that another day. Okay, the first thing is to use the smallest. So the smallest is my chrysanthemum and I'm just going to put that into the like so. Right, you just sit there please. That's Now, if that's not going to sit, sometimes they won't sit and you might just have to, I'll take that behind there, hopefully that sits in there. The other thing is, it's going to be quite difficult, you know, as I said before, that you need to have enough space between the flowers. I need my reds to go in as opposed to out because I really want them to be hidden away. So I've got four of those, so I'm going to put one there, or bring one into there. Now already I've got a problem because that is too close to that but I can get away with that but this is starting to come out so I now know that that's just a little bit too high so get that and cut that down and push that and push that back so that that sits there and I've still got that same stepping down as I said so it's going to step down now with this, I know I'm going to have to cut a bit off that. So that can go into there. And where's my... Oh. One moment. And what I'll do with this is I'll bring that sort of on the same plane as the one that I've just put in, but bring that into about there. So I'm sort of stepping those down. Right, with these big berthas, cut that off there. I'm going to put that into there like so. This one here can go down into there and then I'll just bring that around like that and that can go over to there a bit and then with this one here bring that 
down and into there and then just extend that out like that. Now the other thing, I can't, I don't like doing things exactly, exactly the same and if you were using fresh flowers, nothing in nature is exactly the same and nothing is perfect. So here and there, if it's a little bit off or a little bit high, don't worry about that. Right, and because, as I said, it is for The Bachelor and it's all very full of roses and romance and champagne and love and kisses and all the rest of it, they also wanted some roses. So with the roses, I'm just going to put the roses in one into there, another one into there, and these will, oh, Crikey dick. It's a, you know, I never go to the gym. I don't need to go to the gym because doing floral arrangements like this is like the best workout you could ever get. Right, from there, bring that into there like so and then just give that a little tilt up, out like that and I'll give that a tilt in there. I'll bring that into there. You can do marvellous things with artificial flowers. This can go down into there so give that a bend out that way and I've got six of these I think I might just bring another one into oh that didn't go anywhere that can go into there poke that down like that and then this I'll put down into this side and then that can go out to there. So they're all sort of much the same size and length, but when I look through here, I can actually see the roses. Now, I kept these bits here, and the reason I kept those bits there was because I've got this all up here, I now need to bring some out the sides, and that will give it the effect of being visually even bigger. So I'll just cut that off to there, and you'll sort of, like as I'm cutting, I'm sort of cutting round about the same length off everything. That can go into there, and then we'll bring that out like that, bring that out and then down, so that you've got that big weight there is all being diffused. Cut that bit there off. And the other thing that I've done is, with using these hydrangeas, they've got a little bit of apricot on them, so it's sort of act Try, um, what I had to do with, because I'm using artificial, to get that different depths and tones. If it's got a little bit of colour on, that will help you do that. And then just opening this here out, like so. Open that. So I've put that on that side. So going into here, push that into there. And that also has diffused that heavy bulkness of the white. Right, I kept these bits here because I knew that I would have to extend out the sides. That can go into there, push that down. And because I've done that there, I'm going to bring that over to there. How easy was that? Seriously simple to do once you know how to do it. But the, And remember, always do the stepping down. The reds are going to get lost at night, so I'm not really worried about those, but to me, that is... Let me stand back one moment, please. Oh yes, I'm very happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you another day when I hope I can help. Check out my other floral arrangements and my lips, especially the fundamentals, because that will help you a lot. See you another day.